How's it going, guys? You have a passable question for endocrine biochemistry. Steps one and two, internal medicine, you guys know this stuff. So you have an eight-year-old girl who clearly has diabetic ketoacidosis. We're handing it to you. There's flu-like illness, viral infection that they can mention, maybe about a third of vignettes overtly like I did here. And then you've got polyuria, polydipsia. Okay, so you're urinating too much, drinking too much. And that's because you got high glucose that's being filtered through Bowman capsule, but pull water with it. Okay. And slight visual blurring. This is a very important detail for distinguishing diabetes insipidus from diabetes mellitus. Diabetes, that term on its own, if you hear it, obviously it's insinuated that the person's referring to diabetes mellitus, but in medical terminology, diabetes means polyuria, polydipsia. So just to distinguish insipidus from mellitus, this visual blurring detail is important for NBME exams because you get high glucose uh, entering the lens converted via aldose reductase into sorbitol, and that's got an osmotic pull that's, that can distort the lens, cause visual blurring. Okay, so I've seen students fuck that up thinking a, a vignette with polyuria, polydipsis, diabetes insip insipidus, uh, but it's diabetes mellitus here. Okay, so what are we going to see? So biochemistry, it's not hard. But for some of you, this will be the confusing point. So you need to know that glucokinase is the hexokinase variant in the liver. So hexokinase is ubiquitous. It's the first enzyme of glycolysis, converts glucose into glucose 6-phosphate. But in the liver, it's glucokinase. Pass fail step one, don't have to worry about a bunch of nonsense about glucokinase is increased KM, less affinity for glucose, higher Vmax, greater saturation capacity for glucose in comparison to hexokinase. Don't worry. The only thing I want you to know is that hexo, or sorry, that glucokinase is activated by insulin. That's what you need to know. Glucokinase in the liver is activated by insulin. So if insulin is deficient, as we have with type 1 diabetes mellitus here, or tangentially, if you get a vignette of type 2 diabetes mellitus where there's insulin resistance, in both cases, you're going to have decreased glucokinase activity. Okay? So we're starting with these bottom answers here. Glucokinase activity is decreased because we have a deficiency of insulin. Now, in terms of this is where the past level stuff uh, more or less comes in, the rest of the biochemistry. So you need to know that obviously DKA is the D in mud piles, okay? And that's those are high anion gap metabolic acidoses where you're gonna have decreased bicarbonate, not complicated. So high anion gap. So you take bicarb and chloride, those not that the sum of those values, and subtract it from sodium. And if it's 13 or greater, that's high anion gap. So 8 to 12 is normal. Occasionally you get questions like that, especially 2CK, we got to calculate that stuff. Made other YouTube clips on it, but we're looking at these bottom arrows here now. So in terms of CO2, you're going to blow off the CO2 to compensate. Something called cusmol breathing, which is very deep breathing you can get as a result of the severe metabolic acidosis. So it's a profound slash robust attempt to compensate. Occasionally vignettes make it very easy where they'll just say their respiratory rate's very high. I don't like that because sometimes students don't know the biochemistry. When you have a decreased bicarb for a primary metabolic acidosis, and I ask you what direction would CO2 go to compensate, therefore, it's a down hour. You're blowing off CO2, which is acidic. So sometimes students don't even know that biochemistry, past level stuff, but they see their respiratory rate is high and they latch onto that. So that's why I omitted the vitals. So we're looking at decreased CO2. And then you got to know that serum potassium's high. Okay. Total body potassium, if they give you that as a separate arrow, is low. So we call this hyper. Kalemia, despite a low total body potassium. The why you know potassium is high for two reasons in DKA. Number one, absent insulin. Insulin normally pushes potassium into cells. Okay, so insulin is going to upregulate GLUT4 to the cell surface. Glucose enters the cell. You get increased ATP. So increased ATPase activity, sodium potassium, three sodium out for two potassium in. So if you can't do that, potassium builds up in the blood. So that's the first point. And then the second mechanism is called cellular shift, which they'll write it just like that as an answer on the NBME. And that's just, you got increased protons because even metabolic acidosis, you've increased protons buffered by the cells. 
and potassium can get kicked out to compensate, okay, for the to balance charge because they're both positive charge. So they want you to know that if you're smelling. And then the high potassium in the blood, the hyperkalemia, once it passes through the kidney, the kidney, which is functioning normally in DKA, it's going to sense that high potassium and then it's going to do what it's supposed to do. It's going to calyrese, sophisticated word, calyresis means micturation of potassium. So you're going to be micturating out all that extra potassium that's in the blood. So you have deficient potassium in your cells now, but you got high potassium in the blood and that process continues. And you got to know down arrow, total body potassium, but you have an up arrow, serum potassium. Down arrow potassium, wrong fucking answer. You know the deal and team make more content on Instagram, aren't you? Appreciate your time. That's it.